The first examples of Sora AI text-to-video came out about a week ago, and they are storming the internet as people discuss what it means for the creative industries, for media, filmmaking, VFX, and the future of all visual content. I've noticed it's already in its first few days of public existence, started to completely rewire how people think. For while we are witnessing the birth of this new revolutionary form of technology, we are also witnessing in live time the death of something else. But it's more than the idea of truth. It's far more nuanced than most people realize. I can tell you that I've recorded this voiceover, but how can you trust that now? When AI voices are so good? More interestingly, does it matter? A video like this, which will be done in one shot as I sit in my room and talk into a microphone, you're pretty confident isn't AI now, but in a couple of years, if you rewatch this video in five or six years, do you think something like this could be replicated as AI? I'm pretty sure it could be. For reference, the date of this video is late February 2024, and I'm very interested to return to this video myself in six months, a year, two years, to see how my opinions here have stood the test of time. One of my favourite lines from any author is Milan Kundera when he references the fog of history, that when we look back, we see the paths, the actions taken, the outcomes, the mistakes, but we don't see the fog. If AI is to change everything, this is my personal flagpole of documenting the fog that comes with the ignorance of now. For you, we'll be watching this in the future. That may only be an hour, a day, a week, a month, or a decade after I've published it. And you will no longer remember the fog of how it felt when the first AI images that mimicked reality came out. Many people see the rise of AI either quite positively or extremely negatively. Most see it as a tool to be wary of, but few people recognize that there is no such thing as, say, a free lunch. No matter what positive factors progress brings in any development, there is always something it takes away, something that has to be sacrificed as we move forwards. And no matter how bad something is, it always brings with it a spark of light. In these early days of text to video, one of the most common jokes is to post a surreal human created clip from the past and try and pass it off as Sora AI generated. Netflix India posted a clip from RRR with the quote, we tried Sora and the results are amazing. Very clever marketing, yet reading the prompt, it does make you think, what would Sora look like? And as you view this over time, you will know Currently, I don't. The channel Cold Fusion also pointed out how old Bollywood videos are trending more now as Sora creations. And the videos we saw just a few years ago that it took extreme human creativity that would make our jaws drop. Now we just think very little of. As any amazing special effect imaginable can be done now with AI. Conversely, I found images made by Sora that I didn't even believe were. This one of a dog, I was pretty sure had a hidden human behind it until I realized the blue light was passing through the solid screen. An error over these early AIs that will soon vanish. And across memes, shorts, reels, and TikToks, any previously filmed depiction of human creativity naturally captured is being questioned as AI. Pretty much overnight, the praise of the incredible creativity it took to make visual effects up until this point, late February 2024, has evaporated. We are witnessing the death of creative trust. And that brings around another point. Is what you were watching before AI real? Rewind a hundred years to show old film footage. They never thought it was real. It was a mimic, a trick to capture the illusion of movement, a few still frames flickered between and eventually captured in a clever chemical way on cellophane. Now, with a hundred years of this recorded footage to learn from, a computer is able to create patches and mimic such scenes with a prompt. We look at it and say, but that's not real. Well, 
It never was. From reality TV narratives to film lighting to David Fincher's secret snow at the cinema. You accept it when you see someone's brain blown out in a film that it didn't actually happen. It has never been real. It's all just been sorcery happening behind a screen. Yet since so many of us live and breathe online, and since now creatives cut, craft and create within that very screen, we have become fully locked into this fake reality, comforted, perhaps that at least it is human fakery. I love the world of online, but I am a traditional artist. I paint and I draw and I sculpt with tools in the real world. And I found it funny when I post a picture online, friends say that they've seen my latest work. They haven't, they've seen a replication of it on a tiny screen. And I can often be tempted to tweak those colors and shade it subtly to make it look better on that screen. And I'll admit it here, I have done that. But that is not how the art should be viewed. You don't watch a play on Netflix. It's best to sit in the audience and see the human faces in real life. That's the medium for which it's intended to be viewed, just as paintings were never intended to be viewed online. We've been so swept up in this digital revolution and being able to do all of these creative things online with all these amazing tools to think that the one thing in that creation that could never be replaced is us. And now it is. <laughs> I saw a short on YouTube where an AI display was making the crowd go crazy at a gig. Or so the comments would make you think line after line of how amazing it would be to be there. But when you look at the crowd, they're just on their phones, watching it through screens, just like you and me at home. People have got very confused about it, what it means to witness something real. I think it's telling that no matter how much time we spend on our phones or screens, that they never appear in our dreams. They are nothing more than a window, a portal to a world elsewhere. Trust of these screens has had a good run. It's paralleled well with human effort and exceptionalism, but it's also caused problems, showing us only part of any reality. That time of trust is coming to an end. And as it's done, we should reflect on the idea of trust in the visual image. There is something interesting when you watch old historical plays or dramas that try to depict the reality of a time gone by. They tell you far more about the time in which they were produced than the time they are trying to depict. The film Spartacus tells you far more about the manner and accepted morality of the early 1960s than it does ancient Rome. Just as Star Trek, a new generation, is a poor reality of how furniture will look in 400 years, but funny enough is very accurate to the early 90s. Even now, if AI were able to show us how things were to really look back then or how they are likely to look in the future, we would still have to filter it through the morality and visual culture of our age. And since that culture currently has a lot of distrust around AI, I don't think we'll be seeing the huge change that many people fear. Not just yet. Remember, only a year ago, ChatGPT was predicted to take many lawyers and doctors jobs. Now, it looks more like a tool to allow those professions to be more proficient. I think AI text to imagery will be the same. An astonishing tool for previs, a replacement for stock sites, a way to put yourself in fun, home movies that look cinematic, and will whittle its way into all production tools. But it will still, for now at least, need a human hand to craft it. And if I'm totally wrong, then at least it documents the fog of this time. But the one thing I encourage all creatives now to think about is not to how to cut ahead of the curve of AI, not how to monetize it or clamber on the bandwagon, but to stop and think how these tools can help tell stories that have not been possible until now. What artists and those in the creative industries can offer humanity to help us connect with each other, ourselves and the world around us that have not been possible until now. The death of trust may not be a bad thing. We are now wiser. And after all, if it gets too much and you feel that human creativity is dead within everything you watch, then I implore you 
to pick up a pencil, join a pottery class, go to the theatre, for if you dare to put your phone down and turn off your screen, there remains a tangible, tactile world that you can still trust.